Okay, so another thing this week that is potentially new is minimum sample size required to do whatever approximation that you want to do, finding confidence intervals, whatever. Whatever approximations you want to do, you need the minimum sample size required to basically make it, you know, make sense or make it meaningful. So you have three scenarios and this, I'm sorry, ignore whatever chapter it says here because this comes from a different book. So I mean, obviously I don't know if you guys care about that, but sample size determination, three formulas that you have that are possible. Okay. So you have either you're finding a minimum sample size for a proportion or a minimum sample size for a mean. And that makes sense because you guys are only doing that, you know, confidence interval for proportion or confidence interval for mean, not going outside of that. So same thing here. However, there are two, can, uh, two scenarios for proportion. You know, if you're, if you're um, approximating the minimum sample size needed to, to approximate a population proportion, you have to know whether p hat is known or unknown. p hat is a sample proportion. Do you know something about the sample proportion or not? If you do, we use this formula. If you don't, we use this formula. And that's why I said it's good that I have all three of these examples. I won't be able to do them all today, but each one of these deals with a separate formula. Uh, where is it? And then if you want to do a, a minimum sample size required for a mean, sigma has to be known. And obviously you can see in each one of these, there's these scores, critical values. So whatever we just did, um, we're going to need to know how to find the critical value for this. OK, so I'm going to read all three of these and I'm going to show you how I can determine which formula and I'm going to call this formula one, two and three. Which formula do I want? I'm going to color coordinate too. <laughs> do I want formula one? How do I determine if it's this one? Do I want formula two? How do I determine if it's this one? And do I want or do I want formula three? How do I determine if it's this one? So I'm going to read all three of the examples that I have. I'll only do one of them for now, but I'll tell you how I can determine which one at least, okay? And then I'll finish one of them down. So I'm going to read this one and I'm going to figure out well, which situation do I want. And again, imagine that you are mixed up on your test, you don't know if you're doing a confidence interval, you have to pretend you don't know which section you're in, right? So I'm reading this, I'm on the test, I don't know which section it's from, how do I know it's a confidence interval? How do I know which confidence interval or am I finding a minimum sample size and how do I know which one? You gotta think of all this stuff, right? So, cool, so let's read it. You want to obtain, let me see, let me go we'll figure out. You want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean. Oh, look at that. I want to obtain a sample. Oh, look at that. I want to obtain a sample. <laughs> so I'm going to look at these three formulas because I want to obtain a sample. I want to approximate, I want a minimum sample size. Hold on, let me. Plug in my computer. Okay. Now, how do I know which one it is, right? Well, I want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean. So check that out. I want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean, which is number three. So here, I'm just going to go. Just the first sentence is telling me I would use formula number three. I'm going to read the other problems before I do any of them, okay? Um, I see messages. Let me just check the chat real quick. Make your screen bigger. Yes. I'm going to change what I'm sharing so you can see it. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to do that. Share this particular window. 
this one. Okay, is that better? Can you see it a little better? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Thanks for telling me that. You don't have to memorize the formulas. Nope. Because, you know, statistics is not about memorizing formulas. It's about knowing how to use them and interpreting the situation. So it's important to know how to interpret, okay? And then how to determine, obviously, which one. Yeah, no, no, do not, do not worry about memorizing formulas. And your final, you guys have a three by five index card that you get to use, okay? So, you know, you don't have to memorize formulas, but these are formulas that you might need because there's not really a calculator trick for this and you kind of have to go through the formula. <clears throat> so, do you see why I would choose the third formula for this one. I want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean. I'm not looking for a confidence interval. I want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean. Number three here, right? And then I would follow the formula. This one. A political candidate asks you to conduct a poll to determine what percentage of people support him. If the candidate only wants a 5% margin of error at 99% confidence level, what size of sample is needed? So I was reading this, and actually, since I'm color coordinating, it's not the pink situation, but I do know that I'm not finding a confidence interval because of the fact that it says, I wanna know what size of sample. So now I know that I'm not doing a confidence interval, that I need to look at these formulas because I'm determining a sample size. So now I have to figure out which situation it is, right? So let me go back to that. Now, a political candidate asks you to conduct a poll to determine what percent of people support him. Percentage. What percentage? That deals with proportion. Proportion. So he could say percentage of people, or he could say what proportion of people support him. So I want to determine a minimum sample size, and I want to determine um, the minimum sample size required to approximate proportions. So now three's out. It's either a one or two, okay? Now, I have to figure out if I know P hat or not. So let me see, do I know anything about the sample proportion? If the candidate only wants a 5% margin of error, that's not a sample proportion, at a 99% confidence level, well, I would need that to find the critical value. So I don't see anything else regarding a sample value. So I'm gonna look at the fact that that is number one, okay? Now I'm not calculating these, I'm showing you how I could determine which situation it is. I'll pick one of them. Maybe the last one to calculate because that's the one she asked me. So this is the first situation. A minimum sample size for proportion, and I don't know anything about P hat. I don't know anything about the sample proportion. The third one that I have here is actually very similar, but check this out. <clears throat> um, you want to obtain this is even more direct than the last one. Again, you want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. I want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. It's one or two. At this point in time, you have no reasonable preliminary estimation for the population proportion. You don't have any approximations. So this is in other words, these are on, these are uh, these are unknown. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I have to, it's actually number one again. I thought I thought they told me that I did know something, but I don't. I don't know anything again. No reasonable, so again, this is situation number one. Now, if this one had said, at this point in time, you can approximate, or you have, you know, you know that uh, approximately 23% um, of the sample that whatever, if they said something like that, 
that's an indication that you do know something about P hat. And actually, I'm looking at, do we have any of those where P hat is known? I don't think there are any. No, I don't think there are any. So this is um, problem number one again. And this is the one I think she gave me. So I'm going to finish this one off, OK? So again, I wanted you to determine you're on the test. You mixed up all this stuff. You have to figure out if you want to find a confidence interval or you want to find a minimum sample size. How do you know what the heck you're doing, which one it is? You got to go, all right, is it CI? Am I doing a confidence interval? If I am, OK, which situation? Am I doing a minimum sample size? If I am, OK, which situation? So in this particular case, I'm going to finish this one off now. You want to obtain a sample, minimum sample size required, to estimate a population proportion. OK, so now I'm going to look at these formulas and then figure out which situation I have. Um, at this point, you have no reasonable preliminary estimations for the population proportion. So I'm going situation number one. And actually, for your notes, I'm going to just copy this and then stick it over here. OK. Oh, it came out blurry. I'll write it out again. So it's this one. I think you can see it better. <clears throat> All right. So that means that I need to figure out, I mean, the only two unknowns margin of error and the critical value. These are the two things I need for this formula, right? So let me start with the critical value, Z of alpha over two. Let's figure that out first, because that's practice. We, we need to do that. And in order to determine that, we need the confidence level. I'm 98% confident. My confidence level is 0.98. Again, got to find alpha. How do I find alpha? What do I do? Somebody can answer me if you want. <laughs> Yep, 1 minus 0.98, complement of the confidence level. What do I do after that? This notation tells me alpha over 2, 0 0.02 divided by 2, 0 0.01. Now you could straight up, if you want, you could draw your picture, or you could straight up go, this is, an, this is a z-score, so that would be inverse norm. If it were a t-score, it would be inverse t. You can go straight to 1 minus and then 0 and 1 for z scores. If you're drawing the situation, I mean, you don't technically have to, but if you are, you're finding the z score here. This is what you're finding with this area in the right tail <clears throat> on a standard normal distribution curve, which tells me for this, remember that from back in the day? <laughs> back in the day, a couple weeks ago, anytime I'm dealing with z scores. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So uh, let me share my. Will it be left or right? Would it be, um, what do you mean? On, on the calculator. So you have that option? Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you have that option, second bars, inverse norm, you can put straight up 0 0.01, not 0 0.02. And you're not going to do the one minus because you could tell it that it's in the right. Yeah, you only do the one minus if you don't have that option. If I don't have that option, which like this one doesn't, second bars, inverse norm, <laughs> I have to do the one minus because it wants the area to the left. But I get the same thing, Oops, same thing either way. 2.326. And what does it say? Does it tell me? Um, the other one told me to take the z-score to four decimal places. So we'll take the critical value to four decimal places. So my z-score, my critical value, is approximately 3. Point, oh, no, not 3. 2.3. 2.3263. Three. And you guys, make sure you have that. Use your calculator, go through it. You know, you could slow me down if I go too fast. Um, make sure you do it because the more you do it, the easier it gets. Three, two, six, three. Okay. All right. You with me? Okay. 
So <clears throat> what else do I need from this? I need the margin of error. I need E. So let's see if they, they give me E. So you would like to be 90% confident that you estimate, that your estimate, they forgot the R, that your estimate is within 3% of the true population proportion. That it's within 3% of the true population proportion. That sounds like a margin of error to me. That is your margin of error, 3%, 0.03. So whenever you hear that, your estimate is within this whatever, that's your margin of error. So they gave me that. So really all I had to do was find the critical value. Everything else was given to me, and now I'm going to plug everything in. So 2.3263 squared times 0 0.25 divided by my margin of error 0 0.03 squared. Okay, now let me share my big screen again so that you can see my calculator. All right, so I'm going to just kind of plug all this in. You could do it piece by piece if you want. Maybe I'll do it numerator and then I'll do the denominator. So numerator, I go 2.3263 squared. Okay, then parenthesis times 0.25. This is my numerator. I'm going to take that and divide by the quantity, parentheses, 0 0.03 squared. So I got 1503.1129. So make sure you guys get the same number because order of operations is important with stuff like this on the calculator. Now, there's no Go ahead. Can I see your calculator? Is it big enough? I need to make it bigger. I did the numerator first and then I divided by. And, and, and I put, you know, the denominator in parentheses because I wanted to square it and then divide. If I need to make it bigger, I can. So let me know. Now, they're probably not going to tell you how to round because you're supposed to know that when you're rounding a sample size, it can never be a decimal because you cannot have a decimal amount of somebody, let's say, because it's a sample size. So when you are doing minimum sample size required, you are always rounding up to the next whole number. It does not matter if this is 1503.1 and that would naturally round to 1503. I am still going to go to 1504 because technically, statistically, right, mathematically speaking, I need a minimum of 1503.1129. And so if I go to 1503, that's not enough. I need the minimum required. So it's better to go up than to go down. Anytime you're doing your minimum sample size required, you are always rounding up. You are never rounding, always round up to the next whole number. Okay? So 1504 for this one. Okay? Always round up to the next whole number. So this is an example of finding a minimum sample size required for a proportion when p hat and q hat are unknown, or I don't know anything about, like they said here, no reasonable preliminary estimation. If they say something like, well, they can estimate the proportion for the sample or whatever to be 20%, then that's different than I know something about p hat. <clears throat> but when they say something like, you have no reasonable preliminary estimation, p hat is unknown, you go in for the first formula. All right, let me stop recording.